Hello my fellow plastic wrapped firewood, I'm Mr. Church. Today we're going to be building a shop near Nuka World on tour. This is my mule character, so I want it to be at a free fast travel spot that has everything. You can actually see the Nuka World on tour from here. Uh, and what, what I'm going to be building is actually a barber shop. So to start off, I have this piece of foundation here, and uh, I'm a clown for some reason. Uh, and in the game as well, dressed in a clown suit. And I'm going to use these striped planks. I always use these when I'm laying down floors and foundations because it's easiest for me to line them up. And then I don't have to ever rotate them later when there's stuff on them and you can't. Uh, and then you can just obviously replace them later. Now this hat, these two walls there, Fliberty Gibbet, okay? And when I say Fliberty Gibbet, what I mean is I'm going to end up getting rid of those later. Uh, and then putting something else there and you're gonna want to do that first like after you watch the video But anyway make this blueprint uh, because that's gonna be important if you already have this blueprint. That's great That's what a what a what a miracle, you know, and if you don't have the blueprint uh, I, I just showed how to make it in this video so you can actually look at it with your eyes and behold the glory that's shining forth. And, and if you can't understand how to make it by just visually looking, then I also have a video on blueprints that has that and other ones as well. And I only said that so that I could self-advertise my other content uh, when it's perfectly acceptable for you to be able to understand how to make it in this video alone with no reason to go looking at another video at all. But it's better for my personal growth as a content creator, so I'm forced to say it on this piece of paper right here. It says to mention it at least once. Now, I'm going to actually change this out so it's not fully a glass front, but I originally was thinking of doing that, and uh, then a giant bird told me that it would actually uh, fit the vibe of the building that I constructed around it better if I kept it all rubbish. Now, you're going to actually take the the uh, blueprint that we made and lined it up in the middle of this foundation uh kind of as much as you can and then take another one and put it in the middle of this foundation this one not quite in the middle but slightly over to the side and uh then of course remove the catwalk and rug you don't want those just jamming around the whole area uh then you're gonna switch these to the abandoned mine wall that has the corner missing because when these are burned, they don't have a destroyed texture, which means, for some egregious reason that I adore, uh, you can actually... Uh, there's not as much collision with these pieces as there are with most of the walls. So this will allow us to get these stairs in like we always dreamed of, and we're going to be using these wooden ones eventually, uh, which are going to be on your screen in a second. There they are. I knew they were going to be here sometime. Just make sure that that's green, but don't put them in yet, because if you do, you'll have to start over. Uh, then put these walls around. i um, just working with wood walls first, uh, and get rid of this one after you just built it. Then we're going to try to put a door in that gap because this little area there is going to be a little like room. And I'm thinking I'm going to put like a bathroom there and then get out of the way. Um, that's one of the things I have noticed. I'm the one that's in my own way most of the time. So try not to do that. You can really shoot yourself in the foot, uh, you, you know, but sometimes self-inflicted wounds are the most damaging. So let's try to avoid that. Now, once we have that uh, door in, we can actually uh, then try to figure out how are we going to put something above the door so there's not a massive gap. That's something that we can do by placing this bookcase on top of this conduit. And once you place the bookcase on top of the conduit, you're going to pick it up and do something called the reverse merge. It's not actually merging. You're actually, what you're doing is you're, when you place down the conduit, it's dropping down. Uh, you place it on top of the camp uh, module thing. And I have this door over here to help me measure. Of course, I can just walk over to the actual door and look there. But this one's next to me. And I can just, you know, why do something easy when you can do it hard? That's what I always ask. Now I have a, the uh, pressure plate over here to drop merger back down if I go too far, which I did. I usually do. Um, and let's try to, you know, just keep doing it over and over uh, until it's uh, where you want it. Then you're going to make sure it's actually touching the top of the door and not just gently caressing it above it. Pick the conduit up and place it over here. And like I said, 
uh, this is just an easy, easy build for everyone. I never said that. And that's because it's not. It's actually really fucking annoying. But if you don't have this part of the build, it's really just a box. So that's something. Anyway, uh, I'm going to line that up a little bit better. Uh, which I honestly thought was going to be a lot easier. But just try to get that above there so that it's flush with the door and with the wall. And because of how thick the roofs and upper floors are, that gap above that bookcase will not be a thing. Now you'll see that the bookcase is now uh, intersecting with the stairs so we can't get it in. But if we destroy the bookcase, it's still going to have intersection collision. But if we destroy that conduit down there, which is holding up the bookcase, the bookcase will go into the void called uh, disappearing. You know, when you use the word disappear as a verb... Uh, which is not how it was supposed to be. Then, when you disappear the bookcase, uh, you can finally... Uh, so, anyway, I what I did was I drop merged this flame trap on a rug so that I could get the flame low enough to burn that conduit. And now, as you can see... Uh, let's just put this over here, because we're going to use that later. Uh, what? Uh, as you can see, by destroying that conduit, the bookcase above it disappeared. So now it will no longer uh, collide with the stairs that we're going to now put in here. But first, put a wall in. You want to have these walls all around before you place the stairs in, because sometimes they don't want to snap in after that stair is in. And there you go. And you can switch these to the... We're going to use the army base walls for this build. I'm going to go all the way around. And uh, obviously switch the walls around the stairs to army base wall as well. This is a uh, the wall from last season's scoreboard. So if you don't have it, well, uh, I'll see you in the next video. And then let's switch this to the abandoned uh, wall again so that there's no collision above. Uh, because we're going to be snapping an upper floor and a roof in there. You're going to want to put these walls in here because we're going to double wall it. And you're going to need to put those in before you put the upper floors in. Or they won't snap in that direction. I don't know why. It's just a thing that happens and I hate it so much. Now I'm going to use the army base roofs because this is going to give us a nice ceiling under uh, under there. And uh, uh, as you can see from down... Well, you can't... Well, just forget it. So the camera work is brought to you by... Uh, well, I, I just thought of like four different things that I decided not to say. Because it was just... Mm, should I say that? I don't have time to call my PR manager to ask if that's okay, but I won't say it instead. But under here, you can see the ceiling is fine. And uh, what we're going to do is, um, as you can see, upper floors will snap right through these roofs. And unfortunately, the roofs do have a bigger hitbox. So once you snap these down, if you want to switch that floor, whatever it may be, to something else. Uh, unfortunately, when you walk up to it, you see how it says Army Base Roof when I'm hovering over it? You're going to have to switch these to the slants so that you can reach under them and get them like this to re if you want to replace them. And I'm going to be putting the nasty carpet in here because up here above the shop is going to be like this nasty apartment building that I know is something you guys are going to relate to. Um, and uh, yeah, that's going to be just fine. Now we can double wall this because we have the upper floors in as well. And we can also put a wall on the front because we have the upper floor there. And of course, I'm using the brick wall, or the barn wall set, because it's the best texture in the game. Doesn't it look so good? I like when my barns have 5% tint and are smashed out and bright red at the same time. That makes a lot of sense. We can repair this and replace it back to whatever, but this is, I'm going to actually end up turning this into the army base wall, like I said. And let's put the army base roof up here. There's a lot of army base stuff happening. I don't know. Uh, why it has to be called that. Whoops. Once we have this all flushed out, um, as you can see, we're going to repair everything at the camp. That'll repair that conduit that's inside the wall, which will keep that bookcase showing forth. And in the back here, I have destroyed the two walls here, and I'm snapping these catwalks over, and we're going to make a little fire escape. And I want to snap a half upper floor to this staircase. And the only way you can do that is if you break those two walls. If the walls are not broken, that will not snap to the stair. I don't know why. It just happens. I'm going to put a rug here so that people going over to the fire escape won't fall down the stairs. Because that would be really awkward. 
um, and kind of uh, counterintuitive and counterproductive, I think is what I meant to say. But it's fine. So that's the uh, fire escape. And now I'm going to put some like industrial piping on the side of the wall. And as you can see, I have this weird shit over here. And that is to get the safe to be able to snap on top of there because otherwise, see how it stays red? But if you have the other lockers around it, it suddenly will let you place it on top. I don't know if that made any sense, but if you watch it back slowly, it still won't. So don't bother doing that. It's not going to help. Uh, but what we're going to do is I'm going to make a temporary uh, stack of safes to get some conduits up here. And then, um, yeah, what am I going to do? I'm going to take this and I'm going to blueprint the a safe and a floor uh, conduit. So a floor safe and a conduit. Then I'm going to take that uh, blueprint and stack it up. Uh, let's do four or five times. Grab the bottom one. Uh, whoops. Bring it over here. And once we place it on top of here, uh, you'll be able to snap conduits to those through the locker. Now I'm going to do another reverse merge. Uh, we're going to put this little bendy conduit down on the ground. I've already shown how to do the reverse merge, so that's fine. Just, uh, just do it. And it's going to be... It's easy, obviously. It's just so... I love it. It's one of my favorite things to do. One of my favorite things to do ever. Um, and second only to that is blue screening after the event uh, just ended and I didn't pick up the rewards or loot anything. Those things are my favorite things to do. Um, although, luckily, after the last update, instead of blue screening, I just freeze completely. Just the whole screen freezes. And that's nicer, I think, because I get to stay there and look at what I used to be playing instead of just uh, getting kicked out of the app. So I think it's an uh, improvement, you know? Like, if you're going to crash, at least let me remember how things used to be. Like a little, you know, glimpse of what was, what could have been. That's always nice. How nostalgic is that? Now, um, let's stack this stuff up. And uh, I accidentally destroyed everything. But now we can snap through here. And you may notice that... Um, these things are there and that's just for no reason now when you repair this again uh it'll go through there that's really nice i think it has a lot of detail now we're going to take the large toolbox and i'm going to merge it into another large toolbox so that it doesn't look like a toolbox anymore on either side and that's just to have some boxes industrial shit on the roof i don't know what they're called because i don't know what anything does because i don't have a life i don't ask questions and i don't learn anything i don't like to do any of that stuff because it's way too much work and i'm going to sit here and drool and look at the wall and then later maybe play some competitive fps shooter game where i can feel some sense of uh, you know personality and uh self uh worth you know what i mean like when you um now that i think about it that's not really working for me but let's once you pick this up and move it once you can now move this anywhere without breaking the wire so we're going to take this and bring it up here because that light we're using the yellow one we're, we're well it's red right now but we're going to make it be yellow that's the one that you can change colors that one has to be directly wired up so this is my way of directly wiring it up um, and increasing the chunkage on the roof. Those are both very important things for the build. And uh, also, remember when I said cowabunga or whatever? This is where I had the window, the two uh, half glass windows. And this step here, you're going to want to do back then when I said cowabunga. So if you're following this tutorial and you want to make this yourself, do this then. So this um, was actually an idea that Vapid Valentine had. She came by, gave me some ideas, and she was like, wait, what if you tried doing this? Would that work? And it did work, and it looked awesome. So here it is, Vapid Valentine's design. Um, but it's actually really cool. So what we're doing basically is double walling this, but they're both facing the same direction. And again, when you're doing this, you won't have to delete the whole corner of the building to do it because you'll be doing it first, like I told you to. It's always important to never do what I do, and instead just don't do what I do. Uh, anyway, if you place this inside that wall, because of how it destroys and it has that cool thing, there's room to shove another wall in halfway. Uh, and then what we can do is put the walls back. Um, but the reason why we're doing this is so that we can replace this to one of those Helvetia windows that bulges outward. So we have this really cool old smashed up window looking thing, but without the blue. So it matches the rest of the build. 
So that looks really cool. And then on, on the inside, you can do, you know, different wallpaper designs and whatnot. And then as you can see, I placed this down on the wrong wall and it ruined everything. So I had to restart. Now, what I'm going to do, because I said it was a barber shop, is I need big mirrors for the inside. So I'm going to use this uh, Great Escape game board. I think you could use other game boards. I think they have the same back. But um, this is a, an idea that I got from somebody else. So I will link the video where I saw that first in the description. But essentially what you're doing is you're creating a, a blueprint of, of wall decor items face to face. And then when you place that on the wall... Uh, it allows you to have the back of a wall decor facing you, um, which is really cool. Sometimes you can even delete uh, the back most item uh, without deleting that backwards item, and sometimes you can't. Uh, but this, uh, I know that a lot of times when I'm saying things, it doesn't make any sense. But as you can see, you can place this down, and the for some reason it works i don't know why and then these kind of are like these dingy dirty windows oh uh, mirrors i mean for the barber shop now i also had this bug happen where the wall disappeared even though it was there and it was showing as if it was broken but as you can see there's still a lot of health on it and the wall things that are attached to it are still there but i can see through it and i can walk through it and when i go to replace it's showing me all the destroyed options of all the walls, which I, I've never seen this happen before. And I couldn't repair it because it wasn't broken. The only thing that fixed it was logging off and logging back in. Luckily, they set that up for me well by making the game crash all the time. Now I'm going to sink this down so I can jam this old thing into the ground. Because we're going to increase the garbage around the area. And let's look at the finished product. As you can see, we are in sneezing distance of Nuka World on tour. We can just see that horrific looking Cappy glaring at us from over the horizon. And I decided to name this barbershop Crop Your Top. Because why wouldn't you name it something like that when you could name it something good? As you can see, uh, I put a lot of work into the detail. Also, the bulge in the middle there of the, of the roof sticking out was also Vapid Valentine's idea. I'm going to link her channel, by the way, because you should check out her stuff. She makes a lot of cool builds. Um, and as a good segue, that has nothing to do with Vapid Valentine. This is the dump area where we put garbage. And um, I thought it looked really cool. And a lot of the things around here are trying to emulate the general dump vibe of the ash heap uh so the idea is like we have this pre-war barber shop or old warehouse building an apartment and then there's like the post-war uh dump all around it so i added to it with this old rusty car which i uh shoved into the ground here and then of course the old barrels and over here i was able to put a bunch of stuff in the back of this truck and pile up garbage around so i think the person who lives here kind of like started up the barber shop that was already here before uh you can see there's like a little apartment above but inside it's a little crazy because i i wanted it to look like a barber shop have you ever been to the barber shop so there's like a bunch of sports memorabilia everywhere and it's kind of crazy i kind of wanted that vibe there's not a whole lot of sports stuff in the game though so i had to go with something else but over here you can see how those mirrors actually look pretty cool and i have the chairs kind of turned uh to emulate the idea of spinning of course and then you have the bottles of shampoo and whatever the fuck else I, what do you put on your hair i just have been dipping mine in some kind of rubbing alcohol for the last few years over here i placed you know this is like a, an idea that it's an old pre-war building so there's a boarded up window with cobwebs and i have the lighting going all around some of the lights are off on this side of the wall this is where i was talking about the memorabilia shit i wanted it to look really busy really really bright really crazy um and i put as much you know sports stuff as i have which is one or two items and then you know hoped that the rest would just kind of sell the general idea uh, but I don't know if it does, and you can let me know in the comments section. But if you are going to do that, make sure you be nice, because I will start sobbing uncontrollably. And I just stopped, like, five minutes ago. So, please, 
And then I have these lights turned off because if you turn them on, you actually will throw up and I don't want to vomit too much. You can see the lights, this garish white light that reminds you of your very last hour in the hospital bed looking up at your loved ones. That's not what I like, okay? I don't want that in my build. So over here we have this old fortune teller, this arcade thing, bunch of junk and a pinup girl so that we can masticate, uh, drooling and look. I said masticate. What did you think I said? In here is a tiny uh, bathroom. And I shoved that uh, sink into the wall by destroying the wall. Again, those army walls, when they're burned, they have like that middle area completely free. So you can shove stuff through it like we did with the front uh, wall. And so you can shove that uh, back there. But that's a really cool little um, area in my personal little opinion. Over here we have like a box, like we're unpacking more memorabilia. And I like how I have the carpet down there to delineate the space between the, uh, the shop and then the... Uh, you know, residential area. So up here we have this disgusting looking apartment and I have a strobe light behind this fluorescent light so that it has like that horrible flickering fluorescent bulb that's about to go off vibe. And obviously there's ways that you can actually merge that in there so you don't see the strobe light at all. I don't really mind though. Uh, I don't think anyone's going to bother coming up here because they will catch a disease. Um, this is like a box of clothes on the wash, and then this is actually powering all the lights downstairs, and this light, believe it or not. Now, we're gonna go in here, I use the same old crap door, and what you're gonna notice is that this person that lives here is a hoarder, and they also seem to be taking junk from the surrounding regions, bringing it here, trying to fix it up and failing miserably, but I, we also have... Uh, company tea, which is actually so yummy in my tummy, and, uh, you know, just piles of shit everywhere. Uh, we have um, the uh, window fan in the window, uh, which I love this little detail, because I want it not just to look dingy and disgusting in here, but I also want it to feel like hot, sweltering, stenching with absolute vile degrees, you know? And I also sunk that little typewriter down into that little box thing to make it look like a typewriter case. And that pendant is from doing the PTS, even though I'm on PlayStation. Uh, so let's think about that for a little while. And then, uh, but yeah, there's just garbage everywhere. So you may notice outside there's a bunch of dump heap stuff. And then, you know, the cluttery way they decorated the barbershop itself. And then they just have piles of shit. Of course, this kind of a person doesn't make their bed. They sleep on their bed in a sleeping bag. I actually know human beings that have done that. Unironically, I actually dormed with someone like that in college. And you can imagine the stink lines coming off from them. Every time I saw them, you can imagine how wonderful that was. Yes, I did get all my shots after that experience. Uh, here, you can see the chairs around the table are a weird kind of chair that you wouldn't normally see. That doesn't really match the vibe, but there's a reason for those chairs. And we also... I love those cobwebs, by the way. They just add so much detail uh, to the build. I love uh, the little nasty shit hanging down from the ceiling. Over here, to make this little thing, I was able to just shove these into there without burning anything. And snap those around the outside of the, the modern uh, blue whatever the hell it's called. And I did that because that counter is too, like clean and blue looking and I wanted to hide it with something dingy and woody and like you know like an old like I don't know like this old 90s disgusting vibe but I really like how disgusting this turned out and I wish I had like a pet rad roach um, like if it didn't get killed immediately to be in here that'd be so cool just a little rad roach walking around that'd be perfect I want to talk about these chairs for a second because I did put a lot of thought into these as you can see there's a couple clean ones so the idea, of course, is the person who lived here, it, he owns the barbershop, he lives upstairs. He takes the old ones, brings them up, and uses them himself when he orders the new ones for down here. So like around the table, you've got these three chairs. There's actually a fourth chair there, but like, you know, maybe he replaced one before in the past. Uh, but like, I, I really like little details like that, because when you're making a build, you're also telling a story, and... Uh, you know, when people come up to there, the, if you want your build to blend in with your environment, that's the best way to do it. Because the people that make the, the map for this game also are telling stories with all the little details they add. So if you do the same thing, your camp will blend in to the surroundings. 
Now, also an important thing that I want to add is I did put this out front mostly because I want the concrete. And in, you're thinking maybe it, that doesn't go with a barber shop, but it does go with the ash heap. If you look around, there's all these destroyed cars and stuff on the side of the road. And there's also a dump truck over there to the left that you can see right there. So th there is a construction site of some kind going around. And so it does fit the area. And the way that I'm powering it is I actually placed a uh, large generator on top of this wasteland debris piece. And I drop merged it down so far that it was beneath the ground. So if you do it far enough, nothing will hit the map because it'll be so far below it and you won't intersect. Uh, because this, uh, unfortunately, requires 10 power, which you need a large generator for. Which I didn't want to hide something that big somewhere around here. So I just shoved it under the map. And luckily, you don't have to have a direct wire going to that. It's just a radial power. And then this is ugly and annoying here, but it does determine spawn. And I wanted people to spawn in over here, which they do because I have that there. Unfortunately, that's where it is. You can hide it under the map, but it's a little annoying to get it down there. But yeah, that is the build. Uh, thank you so much for watching. And if you liked it, please consider subscribing. Uh, thank you so much to my patrons and channel members for your support. I did just upload a uh, video to my Patreon a couple days ago, so consider checking that out if you haven't. Uh, join the Discord if you're not in there. It's a hilarious place to be, especially when people are acting funky. And follow me on Twitch. I do stream. All the links for that is in the description. And I'll see you guys in the next video.